All right. So you uh, you will see now that I already have this data download um loaded into my expect session and I already have a model defined. You you can start uh by loading your data into your own working uh, environment by again using the comment data. So uh, it doesn't really matter which um, order that you are loading both the uh, the A and B. Uh, so it's fine, but uh, for new star, you will be working with both of them at the same time as we did in the XML Newton and RXDE case yesterday. So you will load them separately and you will see them all in the same plot as uh, you see right now. Uh, and once you get your data loaded, you can actually start defining a model that is basically like this. So similar to yesterday's case, it is going to be uh, normalized by a constant for each instrument while both actually are on the same uh, observatory. These have uh, very, very small minor differences uh, when you produce uh, the spectrum. You can see from here, let me actually show, see which one it is. So the black one is the A and the red one is B. So as you can see, there are certain differences in, in the residuals that you can actually observe better. And you can see, like minor fluctuations they can be either statistical or they can uh, simply be due to some teeny tiny changes in the instruments as well if you want to see the overall uh, normalization for these two instruments which means that how um, how much of a difference on average uh, that your flux will have you will see it from the constant factors that you apply so as again in the case of yesterday you will fix your first constant to your first data group to one and then you will let this one free um with this one uh this one um you will not see huge differences or huge um problems with your reduced chi square value uh, since, as you can see, the difference is actually much less uh, than like uh, even one percent. So it seems like even though there are some statistical fluctuations uh, over here, on average, it is uh, pretty consistent. So it's also one of the ways to check uh, if there was some sort of a problem between the two um between the two instruments when you produce uh, the products as we did. Um, as I mentioned, it, it can happen that some connection issues issues might happen during the, uh, the extraction of the spectra and the light curve. So this is just to make sure that you are actually within the good uh, range for your uh, spectra. You can run an error command and make sure that you have your parameter is well constrained and it seems like the errors are so so low that you are actually dealing with very consistent re uh, results between the two focal planes um again uh you will have your absorption column you will have your disk component as uh i don't know if you actually got the chance to look at the paper that i sent you over slack um, let me quickly see if I have it somewhere over here. Uh, can you see my screen right now? Like, uh, yeah, yes. I'm, uh, okay, perfect. Because I don't know exactly if it's going to keep moving with me as I go from one desktop to another. All right. So you will see that, uh, here they actually tell you what component that they used for what portion of your spectrum. Uh, you will also see that this is looking slightly different than our uh, residuals because they probably have a different binning. Um, you can, I also can show you how to actually bin your, uh, so this binning will not apply to the actual spectrum. This will only change the, uh, the makeup 
of your plot so it will only be for visual purposes so you want to do set plot com or command and uh, this will be two sigma for 20 counts per bin uh, what do you mean hello oh okay i said plot ribbon this is the command i'm sorry i missed it and now you can see that the number of bins in the residuals which is a, a lot easier to uh, observe has been changed sometimes it will also change uh, the scale then you can basically just uh, get it back it doesn't mean that it cut off all of the energy is about 20 kV. This is just to show you how to uh, play around with your bins, but it does it will not change anything regarding uh, your fit statistics. So I will get back to how it was. Now we're back to our normal spectrum. And then if we go back to the uh, paper that I sent you, you will see that what they are using is slightly different than ours. Uh, Easy Disk BB is uh, very similar to Disk BB, but it unfortunately assumes different torque conditions at the inner edge uh, of the accretion disk. It basically assumes zero torque, uh, but that assumption only holds when your accretion disk is accepted accepted to be at, at our ISCO. So uh, for this specific reason, uh, for uh, X-ray binaries specifically variable on the scale as JRS 1915, uh, it's better not to go with that, even though uh, that um, assumption actually is very widely used. So instead of easy disk BB, I am going to be using like the regular disk BB. Uh, for practice, you can later on uh, start replacing these uh, non-relativistic disk models with relativistic ones and see how actually your spectral fit will change. And then they also mentioned that they have uh, additional uh, components to your spectrum. What they mean is that, uh, as you will see, there is a very nice profile over here that you can see that there's a broadened emission over here and slightly um, less broad uh, absorption over here. So their total model will consist of one absorption for to account for the, uh, the line of sight absorption. You will have the Gaussian line similar to the case that we had yesterday with a negative uh, normalization. And then you have your disk, and then you will have one reflection component that we cannot, we will not be using because it's an external model and it uh, takes quite a lot of steps to actually install it on your computer. And then they apply a cutoff power law, which basically tells you that there is going to be a cutoff energy after which uh, the um, the slope of your power law is expected to change. Uh, but for new star, it's usually better to use NTH comp because you, as you can see, the uh, the spectrum is very well um, is very nice at higher energies, so it's better to use uh, physically motivated models like NTH comp. I will show you the fit. So uh, as you can see, the fit is actually not really that great and we need to work with these components separately. For the simplicity, I will apply one absorption line and one uh, emission line from just a Gaussian model. And I'm trying to, okay. Do you wanna try it by yourself first or what's, what's the point you've got to by now? Mm -hmm. I am close to you. Mm -hmm. okay. I just... okay, I can I have a question? I forgot how to unset the parameter that it does doesn't equal the another parameter. Ah, uh, it's untie. Untie. Untie the parameter val uh, 
parameter parameter number that you want to you know untie from the other one and that's it yeah okay thank you <laughs> you will also need to tie your ktbb to your um t in from this bb and while i'm waiting for you i will just run error calculations to be sure Well, I'm well, in the same position as, as you. Perfect. Do you have the uh, the same chi squared values and degrees of freedom? Yep. Perfect. Completely the same. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Martin. Yeah, I'm a bit behind, so I still need to add the component and to fiddle with these things. So, all right, we can wait. Well, wait a second. Did you already include the line? No, no, I don't have the line. Okay, so then, then it will be a bit less. Okay.
By the way, do you see, do you, do you hear the, uh, the AC in the background? No. Oh, that's perfect. Because it's going crazy, but I don't want to turn it off. But it's a bit interesting. Yeah. Did we have the, the, the same total fit at E squared? But we don't have exactly the same he squared for the first group and the second group. What do you mean? That I mean I the first uh, he squared for the first group mm -hmm. I have one thousand five hundred and fifty six point thirty three, and mm -hmm. the second one I have one thousand four hundred ninety nine point zero five. I mean those are very very close. So like the thing yeah, yeah, yeah. different is just statistical. Yeah yeah. But so, I mean, the, the, the total fit is the same, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> those teeny tiny changes are actually very, very insignificant. Like, you wouldn't even uh, need to worry about it at all. I mean, if if it was different for uh, the number of pins, yes, that, then that would have been a little bit weird or degrees of freedom and stuff. But overall, because squared is... No, everything else is the same, fine. just those two numbers are. Oh, no, no, it's it's fine. Okay. I mean, after all, we are using different computers, different, uh, technically the same software, but different versions because it has to be for different operating system, et cetera. So like, yeah. that's not even a concern. But how about the parameter values? Let me check. Right, uh, look at them. Look at uh, what they used for NH. Okay. I mean, again, it's like statistical. Yeah. So you get similar results, right? Yeah, almost almost the same. It's like less than a one thousand of a mistake. And then, but then it's it's nice. In the percentage. Like Okay, so my X server fell down and uh, it exited from X spec, so I'm sorry. Okay. So, so no problem. Go ahead and Tom will later send me the video and I will catch up. Uh, uh, yeah, I will also add, be adding these uh, tutorials today, like after we finish the session. Um, so I will I will put this on GitHub so that you can try it out okay. by yourself. And I will also list some of other models that you can try if you want to, you know, um, go through the installation and uh, see how everything will work but um so yeah so the idea is again the same we need to uh start treating these uh things uh these features in your spectrum and uh, now i am plotting it in terms of residuals so what you will see is that your higher energy tail is very well constrained which means that your power law contribution is very well modeled right now. And you you need to start worrying about energies, uh, let's say below 9 kV, that is a bit concerning. And below five, it's still again, uh, mostly instrumental uncertainties. As you can also see that the error bars are quite large. And um, apart from this dip in the, in the um, FPMA, uh, it's actually considered to be steady. Uh, so the first thing you are going to be doing is to add one, the first component. As I said, I'm not going to be uh, modeling the entire continuum from the reflection. It's better to include all of the components that actually come from the, refle the relativistic reflection. Uh, but uh, for the sake of our analysis, and for the sake of my mental health, I don't want to install all of those models for the uh, for the moment being. Um, again, just adding one Gaussian line is still going to be providing a bit of a good approximation for what you want to model. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and add component four at 
fall and I will say start to fit from let's say 6.7 and then let's add the second Gaussian I'm gonna call it 6.9 the same uh, pretty much the same absorption uh, line energy as we did yesterday sigma can stay but for the normalization as we did yesterday again for our disk wind we will say um this normalization should be negative 0 0.1 and as we've seen from the error that i made yesterday we should not let it go anywhere above uh zero and then i'm gonna hit enter this is going to be our setup. So you see can I, our... can I get you back to the normalization, how you wrote, wrote those numbers? Oh, so he... Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, thank you. Here's the line. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Everything all right? Yep, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I written them good. Okay. I mean, yeah. the, the idea is just to not let the normalization go any, anywhere above uh, zero. So normally it should be like for this normalization, you can actually kind of see it from here that it would be somewhere around minus one. And for this one, it, it would be somewhere around uh, two, three or something like that. So um, although, although this is not a logarithmic, so yeah. So this is minus one and this will be around uh, one. Uh, or somewhere around 1, 1 1.5 or something like that. So you can actually see what type of normalization that you would need from here. So this is zero. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Yep. Uh, all right, I'm going to start to fit and hope for the best. <laughs> That's a nice number. Yes. And as you can see, our residuals are back to between 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. And if I want to see what the Dalkai is going to be looking like. Oh, oh okay. So as you can see, everything seems to be perfectly aligned. And let's do set plot add to see what the components are going to be looking like. Um, it is a little, oh, okay. So you will not be seeing the absorption here because you need to rescale it to go to, I don't know, minus uh, this. Maybe we can actually try doing that. And we would go to, I will say minus one to a hundred. And, and okay, this is not a very pretty uh, ex expression actually, but, and um, it seems like it doesn't really show the absorption. Yeah, I think that if it's negative, you can't use the logarithmic scale on the y-axis. Oh, okay. Uh, I Maybe. think it was like, <laughs> no. Ah, uh, no. Okay. Oh. <sighs> What do you mean? You're not in XPEG, you're in PG plot. Yeah, but it...
that's the thing what i think that just uh don't do not use pld but just pld that oh, should, no, you can that should uh no it does it goes back to okay what i'm gonna do is oh no not now i'm gonna quickly save everything mm. and quit the session again and start oh no uh Okay, I need to move everything together to, I think, yeah, it's over here. Hey. Well, it shows now, okay. All right, we are back to where we were. And actually, somehow, the did the chi square value change? Yeah, you have it lower than me. Uh, it might be the case, again, another local minimum problem. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's better this way. Well why did it I seriously don't know what is happening. It is only showing one spectrum. And do you do you have them both? So, yeah. Yeah, you do. Huh. You have to be kidding me, right? Now it is here. But it's not in the top one, no? Oh, no, I think... No, no, I think it is there. Yeah, there, there it just are... don't be, can't be seen. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, you can see a little bit of black over here. Yeah. But now I put plot and then it goes away. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> before I embarrass myself any longer, I would say something, but it's recording. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, this this is something that I've never experienced in this past seven years of working with X-ray spectra. <laughs> so it basically wants to remove my spectrum from the plot, but not from the fit. Maybe... Maybe try to completely start over. Yeah, just to load the data manually. No, wait. We have only one. Now there are two. Yeah. Still two. And you still have the the lower. Five key squared. It's still lower than yours. Yep, I have uh, two thousand three hundred and forty nine. If I um, not can you try running errors on? Yeah, the... I'm now. I'm writing right now. I'm doing it. So, I'm trying to run the error on one to sixteen because the other one's just going to be the same almost. And it's 
taking a lot of time exactly as it is. So. This is very interesting. Mm. Anyway, this is. I seriously have no idea what why. I'm gonna quickly check actually. So blood. It's not really coming. Um, then you have the second window. Hmm? Then you have the second window somewhere open. No. PG, no. No. Okay. My computer just decided to stop at the twelve parameter. You demon stop. Oh, well, it's just probably trying to calculate something. Oh, do you want to share uh, your screen to see what's Yeah, happening? I know there's nothing happening, you know, there's like, uh, he's calculating the error, he stopped at 11, then there's some warning that zero alpha matrix diagonal element for parameter five. Mm -hmm. That is something like that and uh, now it's uh, not doing anything i think it's calculating the uh, the confidence range for the 12 parameter but it's taking him pretty long what's the 12 parameter here uh the electron temperature i mean as you can see before running the errors the the conf the um the margins are quite large already let me see yeah, at, for me, it is, yeah, 12 parameter, 7,354 plus minus. So, yeah, it will probably run for, for quite some time. Yeah, it's probably that it's not really that constrained. Yeah, it's trying to find out the confidence range. So it will take a while. Yeah. Um, but what is your uh final reduced chi square value? Uh, before I studied the error. No, no. Do 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 you uh do you know if it found another good fit? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Oh, you can. I actually... think because because you have much lower number at the twelve parameter than me, around yeah seven hundred uh, less plus minus. Well, so you can. I think that this will be the the uh, thing that will lower. Mm -hmm. the, the you can also part. do it uh like this. You can interrupt your uh, error calculation by con control C. And uh, you can say new part 12 and give it, let's say, I'm going to make it a little lower than mine. Uh, let, you, can st you can make it start to fit from a lower value and then see where your reduced chi-square value will take you. 
and then you can start the error calculation from there but it seems like it should be around a thousand okay so i will try maybe i will wait for like try to wait for two three minutes if it not doesn't do anything then i will uh it is I mean, the important part from this analysis is to look at uh, the line features. Otherwise, these models, like just applying these uh, is actually very simple. But unfortunately, my expect actually doesn't want me to see my data for some reason. Uh, let me... Um, wait a moment, I just need to reply for an email. Okay, if, the, if the, it's not going to give me my data back, it seems like. So just to um, finalize at least this part of the analysis, what you can quickly check is how your results are actually compared to the paper that I showed you or shared with you. So this one is from 2016, and I believe there has been um, at least a bunch of changes to the software in the in the uh, in the past seven years. But you can make a comparison to what your results still look like and what they found because you also have um, different models and different uh, model parameters in compared to them. You can quickly start checking by checking your NH value, which is quite lower than what they have. Um, this is not like... A, Okay, this is very different than what they have uh, in the paper. You can check if your spectrum specifically prefers this value over that one, or this is just uh, a value from obtained from the fit by saying, okay, new bar uh, two at let's say 4.9 and minus one and start the fit. But um, as a reminder, the NH uh, and um, the soft component of the disk, uh, they are usually much better constrained if you have a spectrum that has uh, a tail that goes down to 0 0.1, which is like the low energy, the soft part of the spectrum, to be able to con um, constrain these parameters much better. So most of the times, if you have a source that has been observed uh, by multiple instruments within a very short period of time, it's better to actually fit these spectra with more sensitive instruments and then get your NH value. Otherwise, uh, you cannot really constrain it from just the X-ray spectrum. As you can see, in our cases, it actually produced a worse fit. And I will yeah. continue quickly, just plot it in. See if you can see that there's a it actually messed up our absorption line that we were able to fit very well in the first place, and we will see that the line energy uh line energies are messed up quite significantly. So I will actually draw this parameter again and start to fit from the scratch. And additionally, we will see that some other parameters are going to be, of course, it does not find the fit. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, great. It's very hard to get it back to the value that it was before. And I'm going to go back and actually start and see. Hey. As you can see, the line features are really not doing well over here. <sighs> and now we're getting somewhere at least. Yeah. Hey. As you are seeing right now that it takes quite a while just to even complete the fit. It seems like when we tried to give our NH value the 4.9 value, it ended up actually finding a completely different, uh, probably local minimum that it messed up the parameter space that expect was trying to uh, explore at this point. So now we want to get get it back to what it was before, about 2,200 in terms of the chi-square values. And uh, you can see, you can actually check these values from the first column. Let me extend it as much as I can. Oh, this is the best I can actually. So here you will see how your uh, chi-square is actually changing. And uh, this will go for, uh, I don't remember exactly the parameter. Uh, Which one? So, I mean, um, so you will see a few numbers over here. Oh, okay. So you will see a few numbers, like a few columns over here. So this value is your chi-square value, and then the rest actually corresponds to uh, different parameters and their uh, error ranges. Yeah. And I will go and uh, plot it at some point. So yeah, we have a problem with the... How is your fit doing, by the way, Tomash? I'm still trying to calculate the error for the 12 parameter, just just the 12 parameter now. I also try to rescale it to set it a new value, but it really didn't help any much mm -hmm. because I just, I tried to give it like 700 and then fit it and it was all again a thousand. So. Yeah, as you can see, it is actually down to 26 to, for me. But you can also see that the line energy for the um the absorption yeah, one yeah. is actually very very small. So I'm gonna. I mean, I the the energy line for me is okay. So. I mean, uh, one thing you can actually do is just say, okay, I'm I'm not gonna go with NTH comp. Uh, I will just add a very simple power law component instead of it. So that we don't have to deal with 
the complexity of the parameter space. And in the meantime, I will also draw this. Although this might produce like uh, worse fits in terms of the chi-squared values than compared to NTHCOM. As I mentioned earlier yesterday, I believe that the power law, uh, like the simple power law model is actually not really that preferable. While it provides a uh, quite good approximation for the power law tail that you would normally have in your high energy uh, spectrum like this, mm -hmm. if you want to deal with uh, how much the disk versus power law component will be compared in lower one lower parts of your spectrum, then it is a bit of a big uh, problem. Um, there there's also another model that is called simple, which is like a multiplicative model that you will be applying on top of your um disk uh component which basically tells you okay i'm going to upscatter and downscatter some of your photons and i will give you a fraction of how much of your uh, photons are upscattered and downscattered and then that will give you your power law but unfortunately at least from my analysis uh, i could say that it is not really the complete image especially if you have a spectrum that goes up to uh, like 80 keV but as we are now seeing it's still struggling with the fit This might take a while for both of us, at least yeah. to find, uh, the good, the best fit uh, available for our model. But I hope you, you were able to get the gist of what you will be doing if you want to work with uh, X-ray spectrum from uh, X-ray binaries uh, from these three instruments. And again, a reminder that I will be adding also New Star and Chandra for uh, the tutorials, and I will also upload these examples on uh, the expect tutorial that you will have. You can also give it a try with Python if you are interested in. I will quickly plot it for the last time, and you see that there's still a bit of a problem with the line energies here. Yeah. Um, for the sake of our that uh, I will just reload it from the beginning and now we actually see what the, the, the best fit actually actually looks like and hello you can see the reduced cost square values from here and then for some reason, again, it goes away for my first spectrum. Uh, do you have any questions? Actually, no. I think I understand everything, almost everything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would need to look into the models and everything, what they do exactly and such things, but... Mm -hmm. that's like uh, not enough time here for that <laughs> yeah you, you <laughs> kind of need to start studying for those models if you want to actually understand what goes into what because if you want to start reading papers i can send you some if you want um or you can just google the names on on uh and find the expect explanation for each model which will probably direct you some to some nice papers that either describe uh, the model or uh, used it to some extent 
with some of the explanations on why this model was created and how uh, it expresses the physical processes, uh, if you are lucky, by the way. Um, other than that, actually, this concludes everything I wanted to show you, except for um, maybe... So this is for New Star. Uh, I mentioned this to Martin before, but I don't really remember if I mentioned it during the uh, the session on RxDE. Um, there's a way for you to be able to extract your spectrum for uh, a specific part of your light curve or a specific part of your um, observation. This is useful if you want to study the burst uh, spectrum of uh, like a neutron star or if you have a variable source like GRS 1915. Unfortunately, when I started working on it, uh, there was an error that I could not really resolve. And it seemed like uh, Hailsoft was not able to find the GTI um, or read the GTI file that you need to create for the step. Uh, I still ended up adding it as an extra material. So if you want to give it a try, here's a short description in what happens and what you want to do, what you need to do to create that spectrum. Uh, if you make it work, please let me know. Um, but I couldn't make it work and I couldn't really reproduce any spectrum for our XTE and burst uh, phases. A, a, similar to this uh, example, we also didn't talk about how to extract um, the power spectrum. Uh, this is super easy to do. You will only just use one comment, which is basically this. Uh, and then you will start uh, working with a, like a, an interactive version of this. Otherwise, you can also use this specific comment line uh, for two different examples. And you will see that you will have a very nice power spectrum that you can later on save and uh, work also within XPEC or whatever software you want to use. Um, uh, again, these are really not my expertise, uh, but if you have any questions, if I can answer, let me know. Other than that, I think it actually concludes everything that I wanted to do with you.